The question of what exactly makes chemical reactions go forward has fascinated chemists since the dawn of chemistry. And you're probably familiar from your introductory chemistry course with the thermodynamic answer to this question, which focuses on free energy and the fact that spontaneous reactions are associated with a negative change in free energy. That's a thermodynamic description that is useful in some contexts, but to really deepen our understanding of what makes chemical reactions go, we want to connect the idea of free energy to structural features within molecules. And that's what we're going to do in organic chemistry, and really throughout your more advanced chemistry courses, connecting stability and free energy to structural properties is going to be really important. In this series of videos, we're going to lay out a set of what I call stability trends that connect structural features to stability in organic molecules. We're going to start by defining what we mean exactly by stability, revisiting the concept of free energy to some degree, and then we'll look at each of the trends individually in some specific examples where we can compare, for example, the stabilities of reactants and products to judge whether a reaction goes forward thermodynamically. I was working on the slides for this video in a recent meeting with a bunch of faculty, and after the meeting, a faculty member who had evidently caught me not paying attention to the meeting walked up to me and said, what is stability? And we had a bit of a conversation after that and realized that this question is not as easy to answer as it may seem on the surface. The question of what is stability is deeper than many people give it credit for. In this video, we're going to try to answer this question by laying out some concepts and representations of stability that have traditionally been used in chemistry. In a practical sense, we can think of stability as the opposite of reactivity. Reactivity is the tendency of a molecule to undergo chemical change, and stability then is the capacity of that molecule to resist chemical change and exist for some amount of time. We can talk about different types of stability, and in particular, thermodynamic stability of a molecule is associated with and is really synonymous with lower free energy. Recall that for, the, for a hypothetical reaction with reactants A and products B, we can define the change in free energy, here the standard free energy change is indicated by this little circle, as the difference in free energy between the products and the reactants. And if the free energy change is negative, as it is in this case, the free energy is going down, we refer to the process as spontaneous. And in particular, if the standard free energy change is negative, we can say that it's spontaneous with respect to a situation where we have equal amounts of reactants and products in the reaction mixture. At equilibrium, we'll have more products than reactants. Free energy is defined in terms of simpler state functions, delta H and delta S. Delta H is the enthalpy change, and structurally speaking, the enthalpy change is primarily related to the strengths of bonds and intermolecular forces. Stronger bonds are bo both more stable and lower in enthalpy, and the same idea holds true for intermolecular forces. Delta S is the change in a state function called entropy, and entropy reflects the extent of disorganization and energy dispersal within the system, where higher entropy tends to be associated with more dispersal of molecules or energy. It's intuitive to think about entropy, for example, in the context of phase changes, where perhaps we're going from an ordered solid to a much more disordered gas, we would expect the delta S for this process to be greater than zero. But we can also think about this on a molecular level. The number of molecules, for example, is related to the entropy change. Making more molecules tends to be associated with a favorable positive change in entropy. Even subtle changes to molecular structure, like breaking apart a ring, have intuitive entropy changes based on the change in the number of degrees of freedom or possible ranges of motion for atoms within the molecule. The law of mass action, the major equation of which is shown here, connects the free energy change to the actual amounts of reactants and products at equilibrium, which are packaged into the equilibrium constant. Recall that the equilibrium constant is defined as the ratio of product concentrations at equilibrium divided by reactant concentrations at equilibrium, and so it has this appearance for our hypothetical A to B reaction. And importantly, this relationship is exponential. Note the logarithm here. When delta G changes by one unit, K changes by a power of 10, approximately, with this negative RT factor scaling that change. This exponential relationship means that very small changes in delta G can lead to large effects on the equilibrium constant and large changes in the amount of reactant or product we expect. 
This is especially important for reactions whose K is approximately equal to 1, where a tiny change in one direction or another can make the reaction either heavily disfavored or heavily favored. We'll see examples of this during the semester. This equation helps us see that if delta G is negative, that means that K must be greater than 1, and in that case, B, the product, is more stable than A. It's present in greater amounts at equilibrium. On the other hand, in cases where delta G is positive, K must be less than 1 based on this equation, and we can infer from that that A, the reactant, is more stable than B. One important point that we can appreciate now is that stability is relative. It's all about delta G, changes in free energy in going from one state to another. Because all we're interested in really is changes from one state to another, we think of stability in relative terms. What is the relative stability of, of our initial and final state? And in practice, we're most often interested in the relative stability of, for example, reactants and products in a chemical reaction, or two competing reactants within the same reaction, or two potentially competing products that could be formed from the same starting material. Because stability is relative and we're always making comparisons, we tend to think about stability using trends. As I change or adjust a structural feature, what happens to the stability of the molecule? Does it go up or down? Exactly how much it goes up or down in an absolute sense is not so important. You'll hear the terms favored and disfavored used to describe the sides of a chemical reaction. And you can think of favored as synonymous with thermodynamically stable. The favored side of a chemical reaction contains unreactive molecules. In the examples shown here, the favored side is the right-hand side, and by the end of this video series, you'll be able to predict this with ease. The process for doing this involves answering a couple of key questions. The first is, what is the key stability factor or stability trend that's relevant here? Which side contains the more stable species with respect to the stability trend that we answered in the first question? Which side is thermodynamically favored? Which side then contains the less reactive species? And what's the magnitude of K and the sign of delta G? And here we're not really interested in the exact numbers. We just want a rough measure of K and delta G to decide whether we can get useful amounts of material out of the reaction or not. In this case, the key stability factor is electronegativity. Which side contains the more stable species? The side with negative charge on the more electronegative atom, the products. Which side is thermodynamically favored? Well, favored and stable are synonymous terms. The product side is more favored. Which side contains the less reactive species? Well, again, the favored side contains relatively unreactive molecules. The product side contains the less reactive species. For the time being, I'm going to leave open this question of the magnitude of K and the sine of delta G, but what we can certainly say is for the reaction here as written, the free energy change is negative, and the K value is significantly greater than 1. The products are heavily favored in this case. We're going to spend the rest of this video series looking at these key stability factors and applying them in more examples of organic reactions.